So at seven o'clock, we start with Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. This is where we talk about motorcycle and motorcycle related products. I'm Jimmy Lewis. I'm with my co-host Logan, who is going to talk 70% more than he did last time, which I promise you is is going to be not that much, but a lot more than last time, right, Logan? Probably. Probably. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good start. Um, the last time I literally like. Imagine a kid riding a, a dirt bike down the street, which in Pahrump, believe it or not, is actually legal. Um, so imagine me grabbing a kid that was riding a dirt bike down the street and say, hey, come on, and you're going to be a co-host on this podcast. And uh, so that's how Logan got his job, uh, being the co-host here. Um, he wasn't really ready for it, but he, like, like I said last time, he is the perfect co-host because everybody says, Jimmy, shut up and let your co-host talk. So I found a co-host that just didn't talk that much, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's getting better. Already, he's almost doubled his word count from last week. Um, everybody's kind of stoked to have him out here. I've I've coached him up a little bit. I actually let him read my um, my sheet uh, beforehand, so he's he's a little bit more prepped this time. And he knows that if I reach over and I start uh, grabbing for tequila, it's time for you to do what? Start talking. Correct. We're we're doing way better than last time. So. Um, how the show works, the way we do things, is we talk about um, dirt bikes. We like to answer your questions. Uh, we start with answering the questions that people posted on our YouTube videos and uh, on the Facebook page. People, um, We typically will put up a post on Tuesday morning, say, hey, if you have some questions, this is where you can ask them. You post them up there before the show. I print them out, um, so I get a little bit of a chance to review them, which is about as much time it takes me to cut and paste, because usually we're fixing and working on things here in the studio within minutes before we get here. Um, Gabe, glad to have you back. Gabe took a small um, vacation from uh, dirt bike test in Jimmy Lewis Off-Road because he got his driver's license. And everybody knows what happens when you get your driver's license. What do you do? He shakes his head and goes like this. No, you go driving, and you get, you're get you just going to go drive around. And so gas is expensive, and Gabe came back. <laughs> so um, anyway, so Gabe uh, helped us out, uh, got the, uh, the uh, screen behind us, uh, putting up our logos and some nice pictures. I haven't seen it yet. I'll try to watch it on the live feed. And as usual, the other job that Logan has, what's your other job over there? Uh, making a making a list of people that we offended. Yeah, the apology list. Yeah. Or people that we complimented, you know. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's not just me. It might be you too, right? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so you probably should have two columns. Like mine will fill up more of the people I offend, and then you have your column over here where the people that, that you offend, if you, if you can. Um, so... Uh, let's see. We're on show number 29. That means uh, well, almost 30. Um, pretty amazing. I was kind of surprised. Uh, uh, miss Romero's Mexican restaurant. Uh, miss my bartender, Janie. But um, everybody wants to know what the tequila is tonight. Uh, I'll show you that later. You have to hold out for that one, or I'll, I'll, uh, I'll call it out as well for everybody that's listening and this, these will be uh, podcasts, but we have a really good group of people out there, our, our, a lot of our regulars that are, uh, have joined in, and we are going to get to your questions. So let's start out with the uh, questions uh, that I got. And you know what? I actually screwed up on this one because I didn't put your name, the guy's name, but he said, loving your Tech Talk Taco Tuesday shows. Great, useful information. Now the question. I am new to riding a bike three years, and I try to practice riding skills that you mentioned on Taco Tuesday number 17 all the time in my backyard. I have watched lots of G. Jarvis vids. That's Graham Jarvis for anybody that uh, is listening. And if, if you want to follow and watch some of the most amazing videos uh, on generally Instagram, uh, follow uh, Graham and his hashtag is, you know what it is, Logan? Uh, G. Force Jarvis. Yeah, that's it, G-Force Jarvis. And see, that's why you're here, because you know the answers to these questions, especially when it's Instagram. And his big points are balance and clutch control. My balance is getting better on the bike, doing really slow straights and figure eights, et cetera. Yet, I really want to improve more, and I'm located over in Michigan, so I cannot take your class. Are there any off-bike trainings I can do to better my on-bike balance? Well, amazingly, oh, well, I'll finish answering your question. 
Are there drills to help the static balance on the bike? I might try a few nights a week to just try and balance more on the bike in the garage with it off, yet I am not really getting any better. I feel that I'm almost moving my body too much to compensate. Any info or direction would be great. So, man, I wish I would have put your name so I could address you, but I clipped that part off in the pasting. Um, Off bike training. Yes. Uh, Static balance on the motorcycle. um, You know, it's called track standing when you do it on a bicycle and stuff is probably one of the hardest things to do because when you're standing still, you have no momentum and no inertia built up in the bike to to help that sort of um, balance and stuff. So, uh, actually on Jimmy Lewis off road, here I go. I'm, I'm, you know how I say I'm slipping into that pr- pumping my own business. Um, yep. at Jimmy Lewis off road training, uh, there is a, we have a YouTube channel also, and I have like three videos up there. One of them is this static bike balance stuff where I talk a little bit about it. And we talk about putting one foot down and only one foot down. And there's a whole lot of reasons for that. Uh, but if you do that balance thing, and when you talk about uh, moving your upper body. You say, I'm feeling, I feel like I'm almost moving my body too much to compensate. And I think what you're doing is think about when you stand up and you're just standing on your feet on level ground. Um, you're not moving around that much to balance and compensate, but the minute we put a set of handlebars in your hands, you start using that as a tugging, pushing, pulling, you know, and all of a sudden you get out of balance, but you can walk around all day on your feet, which is pretty amazing. But on the motorcycle, you're on a foot peg and you no longer have your heels and your toes on the ground all of a sudden. So now you can wobble a little bit, and you're not used to balancing on the arch of your feet or the balls of your feet or wherever it is. This all sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we teach this in the schools. But so all of a sudden you're rocking back and forth a little bit more than you're used to, so you grab on, you hang on to the handlebars, and then you you become more out of balance than you think you are. But if you just... I always tell people if you're doing it right, you can let go of the handlebars when you're riding properly. And 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 you say, well, I want to go fast. I need to hang on. No. Well, if you're really good, you'll go fast and you feel like you can let go of the handlebars. I know this from years of training and all the practicing I did that especially when my wrists got bad, I had to really work, you know, use my my lower body and my balance to control and initiate the, what the, I was doing with the bike. So let, let go of that when you're stationary. Practice letting go of the handlebars or trying to do that. In the beginning, it's going to feel horrible. But as you get better at it or you put less and less pressure on the handlebars, you finally start trusting your feet, which do an amazing job of telling you how to stay balanced on the motorcycle. Um, And don't watch Graham Jarvis and try to do the things he's doing because he's on on another planet as far as his balance. He he doesn't even think about the balance on the motorcycle. And and what he calls... um, what you're calling like clutch control, we call traction. And he, he's amazing at using his clutch and what you'll find when you're listening to the motorcycles of high level extreme enduro guys is how little they spin, how low the RPM is, because it doesn't take that much power to get the bike to do what you want it to do. It's more about you putting it where you want to put it. Welcome to Prump. Rip up and down the streets on the dirt bikes, boys. <laughs> The Prump Willie Boys are back. <laughs> um, just had a bike go ripping down the street out here. Um, see that? See, I'm keeping you kids off the street by having you in here in studio. So, anyways, um, yeah, it, Graham Jarvis is an alien. Uh, if you uh, want to take one of his classes, I don't think he says much. I think he just demonstrates everything. Uh, but uh, you can always take a Jimmy Lewis off road class. And even though you live in Michigan, they make these things now called airplanes. They fly from Michigan to Las Vegas, and we have rental bikes. So uh, that's enough uh, self-gratuitous plugs. Um, uh, that wasn't too bad, was it? No. Should I apologize to every for everybody for that? Uh, I don't think – not yet. Not yet. Okay, good. Uh, so I wish I would have put your name down. I would have answered your uh, – brought you – called you out. But anyways, so uh, Bali, Bali Ricardo won – or no, I think it's Bali Ricardo said, what is your JD tuner setting? And he's asking about the JD tuner setting on the KTM 300, uh, 2020 KTM 300 that I had. And I wrote him back and answered this, but I'll bring it up here. The tuner I used was a 2019, 2018, 2019 tuner that, that JD, uh, JD, uh, gave me to test on the 2020. And I ran it for the most part in the standard settings. I did not change the setting 
and their setting was a little bit richer on the bottom and the mid-range zones and leaner on top. That's their standard setting. I played around with what we call the transients, so where you're going from mid-range to, you know, top end and from, you know, kind of the throttle response settings and played around with them kind of uh, leaning it out and riching it up based on the feeling I wanted. And those are kind of personal uh, preferences. But for the most part, I would say just leave it standard. And it's a little bit better than the KTM map, I think mostly because it's leaner on top. But when I started playing around with the power valve, those changing those transient settings really um, could either complement or make it worse. So uh, what actually is the setting? I probably should have shot a video of it while it was hooked up to the bike. So I would know the actual numbers that it was set in. But I didn't. So... Um, uh, I don't know the actual numbers, but the way it comes is pretty good. And when we talk about tuning those things, a lot of the tuning, it's not giving you more better, more power. This is the best setting. I think the one that it comes with was pretty darn good. And I was getting really picky when I was making changes. So uh, play with it. Don't be afraid to play with it. Just write down where it starts at so you can always put it back there. It takes 10 seconds if you know what you're doing. So... Uh, Hopefully that answers your question. Brad Lou. Okay, I think Brad sent me a couple of questions. Was he the one? No, Doug M3. That's the guy that sent a couple of questions. So Brad said, um, he's talking about the KTM 350. I was desert racing and I totally effed up. Pretty good G out, but maybe my forks bottomed out so hard due to my fork bleeders uh, screaming and leaking and under the influence of uh, load. So maybe my forks faded, right? And after uh, emailing the, the answer that I gave back to him about, like, if you hit something in uh, totally effed up mode, like you're going too fast, it was your fault. If somebody sets up a suspension like that for that, that bike's not going to work very good. Like that, we call that a safety setting. And you build a certain amount of that, that's kind of the bottoming resistance. You build a certain amount of safety into your, your setup. But if you set it up just for those kind of catastrophic stupid i shouldn't have done that um things bike's not going to work very good and trust me i've ridden a lot of other riders factory bikes that were set up exactly like that because they were riding so fast that they just wanted to save them and i think in that their bike was set up horribly for actually trying to do the job which was to go fast so maybe they should have slowed down a little bit never gone into the catastrophic zone and do it but anyways that was a joke because i've bitched about um fading forks or not bitched i've uh made jokes right about yeah. forks fading because forks don't fade i mean maybe some of the old marzokis when they had a lot of metal in them those would fade um usually they'd wear out uh and then i think i complained on one of the shows about the somebody had some uh, cheap chinese fork bleeders that leaked and and i said well you yeah, had cheap chinese fork bleeders that's why they leaked <laughs> so uh let's see and he continues thanks for the review, love your reviews, but I've got a 350 on the brain. Uh, my only problem is I'm a KTM 500 guy and only thinking about fuel mileage and miles per gallon on the Tour of Idaho. I dream of doing 65 miles in a, 65 miles per gallon and only needing a 4.1 gallon tank. That's because there's like a 270 mile stretch, and I'm not going to do the math right now. But you need you need the five gallon tank to do those stretches. And he starts talking about like, uh, and you can read this post on, uh, these are on the YouTubes, but he talks about like different things. And what I'm reading into this is that he says when he goes riding with his buddy, buddies, his gas mileage drops like 20%, <laughs> which is, it's all on your wrist, bro. <laughs> so, so you turn the wrist. I've been able to tune my JD jetting tuner on those things, uh, back so i get about 20 percent better efficiency but the bike doesn't it's not as doesn't run as good it's running lean if i really need to do it for fuel mileage as i w i was able to do that so um uh if if you're riding if your fuel mileage changed based on who you're riding with that's a that's a you problem not a bike a bike problem and maybe you could contain that so we're on two different subjects here um i should probably apologize to brad for that um, <laughs> to tell him to t tune the wrist back. So, uh, and then he goes into not sure if a tuner could, uh, a, a suspension or tuner tweak could, oh boy, 
Uh, his question got really long winded there. He also wants to know about the suspension. Um, uh, whether, because he talked about bottoming out, um, an air fork will have better bottoming resistance than an open cartridge fork for sure, just the progressive nature of it. But you can also set up those things with oil level and get them to have really good bottoming resistance as well. If you're having problem with bottoming resistance, the next thing you do is be breaking, bending rims and breaking spokes. So, uh, yeah, get a KTM 350. Why not? <laughs> right? I, I, I did it on a 500. So, okay. Uh, Eric Copa. Co Copa. How do you say that name? Mm. Copa Loa. Cop, Cop, Copola. Copola. Eric Copola. Great review. Thinking of switching to Enduro on an RMZ 250 now. How is the 350 for street riding at about 70, 80 miles per hour? Before I go off road, my goal is to be as close to a 250 MX bike that I can get me to the trails at 70 to 80 miles per hour. I think that would be a 350. Any advice would be great. So Eric, and he's talking about the KTM 350 EXC. Uh, you just hit on one of my sour points of the KTM 350 EXC is that the sixth gear is like a fifth gear. It's not really. It's it's actually got a space between fifth, but the whole gearbox is kind of like a, a, I would call it a semi-wide ratio gearbox, not a true wide ratio gearbox. And I don't like tearing motors apart, but I tell you what, if I if I pulled that motor out of that frame, I would put a different six gear inside of it. And hopefully, um, uh, my boy Trevor over there at Dirt Bike Test, who put the six gear in the 450 XC that they raced in Vegas Torino, where he is now Nevada's official M enemy number one for taking out a burrow. Um, uh, Trevor knows how to put a sixth gear that goes really fast in a bike like that, and I, I'm pretty sure we just have to figure out the part numbers. I know somebody does it. I just haven't had time to research it on the internets. Um, and so, yeah, going 70 to 80 miles an hour, you're really revving that bike. I think it tops out at about 90. How fast did you get the KTM 350 going? You don't know? You didn't try it? No. Every time I turn my head, you guys are trying to go as fast as possible during the school out in the dry lake bed, right? Uh, I don't try. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> How fast does the KTM 200 go? Uh, pretty good. <laughs> so, um, but once you, I, I, it's funny, I was just riding the, we were riding the 19, or the 19 KTM 350 and a 2000 and 14 KTM 350 uh, over the weekend. And when we were going down some dirt roads, big Nevada wide graded dirt roads at about 65 miles an hour, that's as much RPM as I, it just gets annoying after that. Not that it won't go faster, it won't go 90 miles an hour, it just gets annoying to run it that far. And you don't really want to change just the final drive gearing, which would be the easy solution because first gear gets up a little bit too high. So that is the sore spot on that bike. It is like a 250 motocross bike as far as off road bikes go. You don't want to go to the 500 zone because that becomes a big heavy bike. Um, if you can, I th if if you don't really need to go seventy to eighty, or, or you don't mind revving the beans out of it going seventy or eighty, um, that's a great bike. Uh, you know, the Beta three ninety has a really wide ratio transmission. Uh, if you're curious, just something I know. Uh, this guy, Wadi Moore. That's uh, if my name was that. You're Wadi Moore. What are you doing? Uh, Crashing a lot? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, no, it's his real name. That's what it is. Wadi Moore, uh, three days ago, wrote, is the best. That's B-E-S. That's, that's, that's what he wrote. So I think he was so bored by our videos on YouTube that he actually fell asleep while he was typing the comment to tell me that the WR450F was the best bike. So Wadi... Um, Man, probably shouldn't be on YouTube that late at night where you're falling asleep in front of our videos and not finishing your sentences. So here we go. We're going to get to Doug M3. Doug M3 uh, said, can you share any comparisons, contrasts for the 2020 KTM XCs versus XCWs in regards to engine, dynamics, suspension, and transmission? Is the XC more snappy than the XCW? Anything you could share is much appreciated. So Doug... Since you got this on YouTube, you didn't watch the whole video because I did that, right? Bob, you were there. I, I did compare and contrast them. So, but I'm going to just 
Because some people have video attention spans. They don't like to read. You know anything about those people? Yeah. Logan? Yeah? Got it. <clears throat> You're going to get, you, you saw your question here, right? Did you see your question? Like two page? You didn't, see, you didn't read far enough <laughs> to get to the question and you could have, uh, you could have prepped for it, but it's going to sneak up on you. So, um, uh, if you would have read, watched the video a little farther, um, uh, and then the XC and the XCW motors in the two-stroke KTM TPI bikes are exactly the same. So they there's no difference in character between them. This, the biggest difference is the suspension and the linkage. So um, air fork in the front, linkage suspension in the rear. Uh, the transmission is slightly different. Uh, so you should watch the video. That's the more I could share with you. And uh, yeah. So then Doug M3 also says, could you share any... Can Wait, that's the same thing. I copied it twice. <laughs> you should have, should have crossed that out when you were proofreading this for me. Didn't have a pen. Oh, you didn't have a pen. <laughs> Good excuse. Okay. Uh, we'll get back to Doug. I know he had a second question. Let's see. Joe... He, he, he's already he's already, he's keeping it track. Um, Joe Guns says five days ago he said I have a 19 XCW 300. To me, one of the things that fuel injection does is the same thing that it well, okay it does the same thing every time you twist the throttle. Anyways, he has a Dix Racing modified head, an FMF gnarly, and a red spring sitting on the shelf. All those things are sitting on the shelf, and I have no plans to install them anytime soon that's how much i like this bike so i have factory connection lower the bike 20 millimeters with 20 millimeters with the ktm kit and had it sprung for my lard ass i did buy the slavens racing get ecu i like both the stock and the get ecu for different conditions um i've not tried that get a ecu i would like to try that just so i have experience with it but um that is probably one of the biggest things about fuel injection is that it does the same thing every single time at different altitudes, you know, for the most part. I remember I talked about last week, KTM does have an update for the 2020 bikes so that that sensor comes into play. Um, and uh, that's good. So, uh, yeah, Doug, uh, good on you. I, I agree with you. And like I said, that's the biggest thing with fuel injection is just consistency. And when you start trusting that consistency, you go back to a carburetor. It's kind of hard to do. Um, okay. Michael Agason, what's the best shop to send your suspension to you if you have a 2019 KTM 300 XCW? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I send all my stuff to George at ESP and he's, uh, he's over in uh, Montrose, California uh, because I've worked with George for a long time. I have a good relationship with him. When I tell him what I'm looking for, he knows exactly what I'm saying. We speak the same language, and he puts it into the bike, and generally it's really good. Uh, if I wanted my 2019 KTM EXC to work like a 2020, and I tell you I would, and I don't know how different the difference in the chassis uh, I don't know how much that would play into it, but I know they made some cha suspension changes and I think they're all positive. Uh, if I wanted to have that done, I would send it to a, like a WP authorized service center or directly to WP. They have outlets in the United States now, and I guarantee you that they know the setting in one and the other, and they can probably update it. So that would be the, the, the kind of the easiest thing to do, the safest thing to do. Um, or if you... No, I and and if I had a 2019 KTM until I rode the 20, I wouldn't want to send the suspension in because I thought it was good. But it's the new one's better, and 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 that's that's the problem. If you don't know, you don't know. So how are you going to make it better? And I always ask people this when they want to send their suspension. I'm like, what's it doing wrong? And if you can't tell me what it's doing wrong, why send it someplace? Because they're just going to give you another setting that could be just as wrong as your stock setting in a different direction, another direction. So. um yeah. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. I'm getting thirsty. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Yeah. <laughs> you ready? You want to answer the next question? 
You're, he's like trying to read it. He's like, there's no way you're going to answer this one. You've never ridden an Africa twin, have you? Nope. Nope. See him in the class, right? Yes. Uh, Phil uh, Brilling, Brillinger has a 2018 Honda Africa twin DCT. What was your favorite using, user setting for dirt? Also, I converted to tubeless using Loctite Marine Epoxy and Gorilla Glue Waterproof Mastic Tape. I have about a thousand miles on it now. Have you tried this? Any reservations or comments? <laughs> um, uh, no, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that particular video on how to do that on YouTube just yet. But uh, if it's working for you, then uh, good, good on you. But man, uh, I hope you're carrying a set of tubes with you just in case something goes wrong. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, like I said, I haven't haven't seen it. Um, Actually, I run in most of my adventure bikes. I actually convert back to tubes just for safety and comfort and consistency. If that if that uh, tells you anything, um, and like a lot of the KTM's now come with a tubeless system that use some sort of a rim band and things, and not that they uh, have any problems, but like if something starts going wrong, the problems seem to compound. Like if you get a flat and you ride on a little bit, it's not that uncommon that whatever caused the flat might also go in and punch that center rim tape or when the tire comes off the bead, it peels it off and it's really hard to get the tire back on the bead and there was beat it up out on the trail. That's where a tube really comes in handy. Um, as far as my favorite user setting for the dirt, uh, my memory, the two brain cells I have are, um, are not functioning properly right now. I can't tell you what the setting was, but if you watch that really long video that you were watching that you probably did get to the end of, I guarantee you that in that diatribe of information that me and John Beck spit out, we talked about the setting. So maybe watch that video just a little bit longer and you will find that information because most people say, you guys are wussies for riding a bike with DCT. <laughs> so thanks for Philip for... Uh, uh, at least not beating me up for being such a girl that I ride a bike that shifts its gears for me. Because I also have recluse clutches in my bike. So you're going to answer that. You're going to read his name and you're going to answer this question. Got it, Logan? The Michael Brown said, "What is the most important tool bag in your trail tool bag? Tool bag. What is the most important tool, tool. in your tool bag? The Motion Pro." trail thing okay toolkit the mp tool yeah i'm gonna agree with you on that i think if i had to just have one tool how'd you learn that from your youtube <laughs> somebody's watching um yeah I'd, I'd almost have to agree if i could only have one tool let's we got some mechanics in here people that ride a lot right yeah. let's go around the horn I, that's what i care the MP tool. Yeah. So, Jimmy, that's Tyler's dad, isn't it? You didn't learn that from your dad? You don't learn anything from that guy, right? What does he know? He's an old dude. <laughs> yep. Mitch? Leatherman. Leatherman. Yep. Mojave Bob? Triple A card. Triple A card. <laughs> Mike? He's, he's, so, the, so, we have in the house tonight Mike Hodges, who was the late, great Danny Hamill's uh, mechanic back in what years? He's got his mouth full. He's he's got his mouth full of tacos. I'm 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 like literally watching him chew, envisioning that I'm chewing a taco, and that's why I'm gonna have a little bit of tequila tonight, as well too, because it's Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. So, Mike, uh, what years? Ninety two to ninety five. Ninety two to ninety five. He was uh, wrenching for Danny, and that was uh, KTM in the. Uh, no, well, uh, no. it was. KTM 250 years, right? No. no Kawasa it's oh, it's Kawasaki. It's Kawa years. Oh, I'm just thinking, a, a missing, the, yeah. No. Um, <clears throat> kind of worked with him and, and Homer a little bit yep. in the, the KTM days. And then when he went to Kawi, um, he asked me to come on board and... Yeah, so so Mike wrenched for uh, Danny ninety two to ninety five, yes. and th so that was the end end of KTM, uh, end of KTM into the Kawasaki Team Green into days. Kawasaki. Yeah, yes. correct. Yep, that's when uh, I think I I kind of stopped racing sort of. Then that was when I sort of retired. I think I retired in ninety two ish, really the first time or something. No, you were still there. So I remember 
going to nationals. You were there. Oh, because I, yeah, I rode a Kawi for a couple of years too. Yeah, yeah. Your dog would pee on my buddy's. My dog peed. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Scooter. Yeah, that stupid mom. little. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, at the time. Uh, okay, so favorite tool, tool bag, tool. $20. And a pack of Marlboro cigarettes in Baja. $20 and a pack of Marlboro cigarettes in Baja. And some chocolate. And some chocolate, that yeah. Can get you anywhere. <laughs> Broken down anywhere. Yep. Uh, Gabe. MP tool. MP tool. Yeah, so I think the MP tool takes it. Um, that was good. Good job, Logan. So, um, uh, and then somebody says, I like this bike. Uh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, it, it, we're back to Doug M3. Five days ago, he asked, which way should I go, XC or XCW TPI? I don't know. You, you, which which way should he go? Um. XC or XCW? Because we don't know a thing about Doug. Here's the best thing is Doug wrote in. We know that he's Doug M3. I'm not sure... Like if he's 220 pounds and 5'6", or he's your size or my size. or We don't know what age he is. We don't know the ability level. And he's asking us what bike. So I'm going to go on the safe side. I'm thinking you should get a um, CRF250L. Right? That's mm -hmm. like anybody can ride one of those. Yeah? Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, uh, Doug, I don't know. Um, I think that was part of the last part of the last question, or it was tied in there, and you just made it in two separate posts. But um, it's it's hard for it's hard for me to recommend a specific bike to somebody that I don't know, and I, I get asked this all the time. Hey, what should I what which bike should I get? This or that? And sometimes we actually do posts on dirt bike tests that are this or that, and we try to describe these two bikes so we put ourselves in the position of we got to ride these bikes. Now let's describe them to people so they can make this educated decision because. They're, those are two completely different bikes, and if you are, if you say, "Hey, I'm going to go to the motocross track," that eliminates one of those bikes quite a bit compared to the other one. And then if you say, "Hey, I'm 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 never going to touch the track," then there's another bike. You know, so it's there. I need to know something: weight, ability level. You know, the more information we get, the better. But I don't really want a big long story like that other one that we got. <laughs> yeah, you know, where they talk about you know. Their dog, you know, how they, they like to, you know, they like the their dog pissing on somebody else's tires that has nothing to do with the tech yeah, talk. Was your dog pissing on my buddy's <laughs> leg? Oh, on his leg. Oh. Remember Ricketts? Uh, yeah. It was his leg. He probably deserved it. He did. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Uh, Brian P says, thanks, Jimmy. Great Tech Talk Taco Tuesday, but now I'm more confused. At 5346, you started by saying XCW, then you finished your comment by saying XC. Now I'm even more confused. Now, Brian P here gave us just enough information to get everything we need out of this question. So I went back and looked at uh, 5346 and saw what I said. And basically when I was talking about it, I just forgot to say W at the end of XC, and that's how confusing those bikes are. And sometimes, you know, I had a little, you know, while we're on the on the show, and maybe a tongue slipped a little bit. But I was talking about the uh, XCW the entire time, and uh, I would say you're gonna have to apologize or apologize to Brian P. If you would have paid more attention, I I said when I said XC, I also said PDS, and because we were talking about suspension at the time, and that should have cleared everything everything up. But thanks for pointing out that. Um, I made a mistake one time. That one. That one time. I'm gonna have to go off camera right now and hurt myself. But okay. The other way you can comment on our stuff is on discuss, which is that that those are the comments on the bottom of the uh, tests and posts on dirt bike test. Uh, we look at those. I look at them at least once a week uh, to try to answer the questions. And those, it's a moderated form, so we don't put we don't get all the garbage up there that you might get on some of the normal social media things where people tell me that I'm fat and slow and I have no right to be telling you about bikes or stuff like that, but we don't delete those. So on Discuss, we do delete them because I want my site to make me look super awesome. So Jerry asks, Jerry Ready yesterday uh, says, I would like to see the sixth gear install also. It is the only thing this bike is using really. So 
uh, basically Jerry watched uh, Trevor's uh, video of Vegas Torino, where that that is Vegas Torino. When you're averaging over 50 miles an hour, you're in sixth gear most of the time. Uh, yeah, Trevor, get your ass in gear and get that sixth gear story up on the site. I mean, you don't just get to go ride free dirt bikes all the time without doing a little bit of work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. yep. So get there's there's what he did it. Yeah. No, there's not the there's not the parts list and the install oh. video. Yeah. No, he talked about it. He said, "Yeah, we put it in here." <laughs> With a picture of the cases split, but I, I I tell you what I think happened, they didn't take enough pictures. So there's that one picture, and they were probably busy making sure that the gears went back in properly, as opposed to being a you know proper journalist and standing around and talking to the guy. So you distract him, so he leaves that. Mike, you know when you leave that one little washer out inside of the gearbox, oh, yeah. never happened to me. I just heard about yeah. people yeah. <laughs> the yeah. the one time. Yeah, you know, so uh, but so he was probably doing what he should have been doing as a racer and been paying very close attention and not being a good journalist and taking pictures of everything. So he's probably trying to figure out how to get pictures of that sixth gear install when they don't currently exist or a video of it and and then trying to get the parts list. And so it's not just as easy as Trevor get the damn story up, even though as Jimmy says, he's probably doing his best to get it up while still trying to continue to be a racer. So I have no idea how you do those two things. So, Jerry, I'm sorry. Um, I think I just beat up on Trevor, so I'm going to apologize to him later. And at that point, you're going to read this question here. Uh, I'm going to quench my thirst. The one by Justin. Mm hmm. Okay. Justin. Say, say that. I think the yesterday thing gets. So, I think that's his name right there. You say that yeah. name. <laughs> Ben everybody Lee. everybody laughs at me because I can't pronounce names. And, like, I mean, that's a hard name. Bevelo? Who? Beavlacker. Beavlacker. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I'm not going to spell it. B I V E L A C Q U E. There's no R, I just added at the end. <laughs> Beavlack. Okay, so, Justin, your question is. Really wish this was done a couple years later, so the 16 or 17 XCF would be compared to the FX. So what Justin is asking is he watched uh, one of our, he read one of our tests on a comparison between a KTM XCF and the Yamaha FX, and it was, I think, in 2014. So he's going through the archives, and he said, I wished it could be done. So I promptly sent him the link for the 2019 250F comparison that we did on Dirt Bike Test uh, and said, I wish that uh, the search engine would work better. Because <laughs> if, you, if you had to ask that, then you should have really, you really should have known. So what's that one? The Dave Locker 3. What's oh, no. Yep. Oh, no. Did you say, oh, no? <laughs> no, the three days ago. Yeah, I got it. Uh, give the kid a few more starts, and he will be an interest addition. I am interested what he, his generation thinks about the sport. Good for you for giving him a shot. So, so do you know who the kid is? Probably me. That's right. <laughs> Right, good. See, so there's some questions in here for you. So did you get that? He's interested in what your generation thinks about our sport. So he's talking about dirt bikes, I suspect. Yeah. Uh, See, that's why I said you should have read through the whole thing. Then you would have got here and you could have you could have thought about this. I didn't read through these parts. Oh yeah, and you're you're doing that. What do they call that when you're um. Uh, you're kind of skimming through stuff, you know, when you're studying for tests and you're just uh, scanning it. Yeah, you're you're uh, taking in the yeah, taking in the bullet points. Yeah. yeah, you missed the important one. Yep. Okay, so uh, what do you think about the sport? Uh, I think you like golf. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Oh, and that's not a slam or anything like that. I mean, it's just the truth. I mean, so so we had Mike came in here, and Mike yeah. is now an avid golfer. He he lives his life for golfing, yeah. and uh, and then Mojave Bob was trying to tell you that you should wait. Do you try to convince him to take up golf or keep going with golf, or you try to get him away from it, yeah. run away? Okay, so we had some differing views, but 
What do you think about dirt bikes, man? I love them personally. Yeah. <laughs> that that's that's your that Dave. That's your answer. The kids love the dirt bikes. Keeps you out of trouble, doesn't it? Yep. Yep. That's the important thing. Kept me out of trouble. You imagine what I would have done if I just would have been running around like, like, like. What would I do when I was a kid? Oh shit! You would. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I beat up my brother. Yeah. Be like him. Oh yeah, I'd be like my brother. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This one, uh, we got to see it. What, what's the, what's the name? Christopher. I see you got that. Good. Oh, Christopher Maurice. He was uh, he was one of our students. Oh. So, anyways, go ahead, read. Logan is a great help. He kept kept an eye on me at your riding school when we were doing the front wheel skids. The first few times, I could not feel the front wheel locking up, and he rode alongside me. With a thumbs up, thumbs down. Thanks for having him join you, Jimmy. Thanks, Christopher. I, I appreciate that. So, um, you know, at our school, we teach, you know, the important drills. So we have you skid your front wheel. <laughs> uh, everybody's going, well, why would you do that? Well, we like to take out of control situations and put them in a controlled environment. Yep. And, uh, and sometimes when you're doing that, you are so petrified. Um, and don't try it at home. You need to, it needs to be in a controlled environment. And that's why Logan rides next to you when you're doing it, if you're not comfortable. And yeah, you're skidding. No, you're not, right? Is that how you do it? Yep. That's good. I usually just yell at him. <laughs> yes, no, yes, no, 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 yes. <laughs> Let off the front brake. <laughs> so um, often imitated, uh, never copied. That's what we say about our school. <laughs> uh, that's a... That's a very, that's a not a proper riding technique. You never, ever, ever want to skid your front wheel when you're on a dirt bike. Um, but you should know what it feels like. Uh, so, Logan, you see, got the, got the fans. You got, a, you got a fan club going right there. Um, you're going to have to get your own signature T-shirt, maybe a sticker and stuff, and then we'll put it on the dirtbiketest.com uh, store. If you want to support Dirt Bike Test by wearing a shirt, unlike the ones that Logan and I are wearing, don't we look kind of like twins today? Yeah. As soon as his hair starts falling off, he'll look a lot lower like me. <laughs> but uh, you can't have this shirt, but we have many more on our website. And uh, order them up uh, tonight, and I'll ship them out tomorrow, I promise. Uh, so I know there's one order pending that I need to get to because I've been on vacation. So what's our next question? Nathan Donaldson yep. said, I have an uncorked 2017 RMX 450 and a... JD6. That's a JD Jetting Power Surge 6X. They need to start paying me to say that. As I say it a lot. Yep. Yep. I'm getting a Mega Bomb header and a Power Core 4. Those are FMF products. Any setting recommendations for the controller? I am currently running their factory recommendation for my bike with aftermarket exhaust, no quiet, no spark. I will. I want to run the spark arrestor when I get the power core and mega bomb. Okay. Um, so typically, you know, you know the answer to this. Stock. Maybe. <laughs> Leave the bike stock. Is that what you're telling him? <laughs> for the controller. Uh, well, yeah. Actually, you know, it, it, they they have a setting for that, and and in my experience, when you switch between a, um, a like a like a a FMF product specifically, when you switch between a Q and a and a power core, or you put this, or you put the spark arrestor in the power core, it doesn't change all that much. It's still like, especially com on that bike compared to the very restricted exhaust that it comes with, it's it's a more open exhaust now. And like I always say with the the JD tuning, I'm, it's it's more you're just tuning for character. Like little changes change the way the throttle response is. And I imagine if you had it on a dyno, and everybody knows how much I like dynos. Uh, Chris at Rottweiler, um, that uh, you can probably see some slight differences in power, but in the real world, it's more about drivability and controllability, and their settings are, are generally really good. But if you put it on there, try riching it up and leaning it out just a little bit. And same thing, know your setting that you're starting at. If it works good, experiment with a little bit. See if you can make it a little bit better. And if you can't feel, you can always put it back to the, the standard setting, and then it's 
if you can't feel it's you know it's safe it's a it's a good safe setting to play with and uh so um yeah i think uh yeah, the, 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 the good thing is is that you are putting a, a fueling controller on that bike when you're making the modifications. Most people just bolt a pipe on, and then they wonder why their bike pops and sputters and backfires and doesn't run very good. So uh, good on you for that. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, wow, that's a long one, isn't it? Yep. I should probably read that. Let's see. David Garrison asks, uh, I have really repre- appreciated your re- review on the 2020. 2020- 300 xcw i'm currently looking at this and the xc is my next bike since selling my 2019 te 300i without getting into depth i'm just curious about your thoughts on the pds suspension compared to the linkage as i know there are slight differences in the gearbox and fork between the xc and xcw for someone with your speed and say you wanted to do everything from tight single track hard and drill type events on the east coast to more wide open sections out west what would be your choice for the do-it-all platform? I know it is a bit of give and take with either bike, but I really appreciate what your thoughts are since there are no demos available. Uh, did I answer that in the video? <laughs> um, uh, uh, I, I need to do, I really need to do, I mean, that, that's a good question. That's actually, a lot of people are torn between XC and XCW and they're very similar, yet they're, they have different characteristics. And your question, I think really, um, teeters on, so you understand what the linkage feels like. And when you're TEI, that's, that's KTM slash Husky setting up a linkage bike to work like the PDS. In other words, softer kind of more enduro single track settings. And the difference between that and a PDS bike, in my experience, is the PDS, um, the uh, the initial preload on, on the PDS tends to, it holds the bike up a little bit higher when it's stationary, but it rides a little bit lower when you are riding. Uh, and the XC... Uh, the XC holds itself up higher all the time, like I said, when when you're riding. So uh, I was pretty impressed with how well the XCW carried itself into the faster stuff. And when I rode out here, I, I was, frankly, I was blown away. And right after I did that and then I rode some other bikes, now I want to go back in and make my bikes work as good as that bike did, even for desert. And we're talking about a Honda CR450X um, coming off of riding the Yamaha WR450, which maybe the 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 fx would be a better bike to compare it to but all these bikes that are kind of built for faster more you know more desert racing and uh you can't go wrong with either of those bikes uh the more you're going to do back east stuff the more i'm going to lean toward xcw but then i also like the xcw transmission out here so here we are kind of just you're just splitting hairs and that's the that's kind of what it what it comes down to in uh in this in this world but um yeah i i need i would need to know more information you think yep 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 but you're not gonna either of those bikes you're you're i i mean the bikes are so good these days uh you're not gonna be too disappointed i'm wondering why are you getting rid of that husky i, I don't even know what those things are I never get to ride them it's like they make they still make huskies you guys are husky you used to be husky riders mm-hmm. You got rid of them too and bought Yamahas. Yeah. yeah. I know Yamahas. Yeah. I, I'm going to try one of those Huskies one of these days. I heard, I heard that I'm going to get to try one. Actually, Trevor asked me if he could, if he thought it if he thought that Husky would like him to race one in the 24 hours at Glen Helen. And I said he would have to ask that company, Husky, about that, not me. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Cody Joseph asks, are you familiar with the smart carb? Uh, from Technology Elevated. Yes, I am. Also, would you be willing to test it for a head-to-head comparison versus the TPI on the KTM 250 300? Yes, I would. Is it amazing? It is an amazing product for a lot of people uh, that don't know about it. Same inventor as the Electron, but decades more advanced. It has all the benefits of TPI, altitude compensation, fuel economy, no jetting, low emissions, etc., without any of the added weight or complexity. I I find it very complex when you open up the bowl of a carburetor and gas spills out on your hands these days. 
Um, let's see. I really want to see someone test one head to head against the TPI. I have a 2019 300XC with the 36 millimeter SC2 smart carb, but I can't afford to go buy a new TPI just for comparison. Neither can I. I'll bet the technology elevated would send you. I bet the test technology elevated would send you a unit if you talk to them. I have to have time <laughs> to a talk to them. And then B, get the bikes to test and all that other stuff. And uh, uh, we need to do a commercial read right now so we can get some money to get the time. Yeah. And the people and the resources. So if technology uh, elevated would like us to test that, we have a day rate for that kind of stuff. And I'd be willing to do it uh, at their uh at their convenience <laughs> so hey i i've i've i don't know if i've actually ridden with the smart carb i may have um i have i've had i've had some friends that have had those on their bikes and that and the electron both of those to me are nowhere near the same consistency and throttle response of a fuel injected bike they won't do the same big giant wide open you know big throttle openings at low rpms they'll They'll kind of bog out when you get kind of out of their their zone. Where a TPI bike, uh, it's it's just amazing how how well it pulls, how well it functions at, at these kind of weird things. And there's no lag or or kind of hesitation when you crack or or kind of whip that throttle open. Uh, it just they just respond, and it doesn't matter what carb it is. And it, and definitely those two tend to be a little bit better at the compensation parts of the adjustments that they make, but the, uh, the, I'm trying to think of how to, how to explain it, but there's always some little bit of a delay. Like it, it, the carb has to figure out what you're doing. And if you're constantly changing the position of the, the throttle, it's never as crisp and responsive as, uh, as the electronic fuel injection. So, um, Hopefully that answers your question a little bit. I would like to try it. And I mean, I'm all for having low technology stuff, you know, non-electronic stuff. If that's what you're, if that's what you're into, you just want to play with jets or needles or, or that kind of, uh, those kinds of things on your bike. So, um, yeah, uh, it would be real interesting to do a comparison. And, but generally I found that if I'm going to do a comparison between a carburetor and a fuel injected thing, there's, Everybody that's going to want to see that comparison almost has already made, well, not everybody. The people that are willing to comment on the posts and things like that on social media have already made their mind up, and it's kind of like a gun ownership. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like I like carburetors, <laughs> and they're pointing <laughs> the gun at you. So, uh, Or maybe they like fuel injection, and they're pointing a the laser at you. I don't know how it works, you know, it's a... Uh, so uh, let's see. Um, Matt Stoutenberg says, we're going back right onto the Facebook feed live now here. Uh, yep. Matt Stoutenberg, who was the electrician that uh, wired my house uh, back in Costa Mesa, and it hasn't burnt down yet. So good job, Matt. If you want to do some solar power, talk to Matt. He says, I want one of those shirts. I'll bet you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's other ones that you can order on, on the store, and that'd be good. Cameron. Cameron Cotney says, Ola, any word on when the 2020 KTM Dual Sports will clear carb smog? Well, they already cleared it a long time ago, or is it going to take longer because they have a new model like happened in 2017? So I think the regulations for bikes being released in 2020 got kind of altered or some funny stuff happened. There was an interpretation of, uh, I should get Chris Real on here. Um, he'll tell you, he probably knows a lot more about that stuff. Actually, I'm going to get Chris Real uh, who's in the in the in he shows up and uh, watches every once in a while. He is a petroleum engineer and also does DPS technical. Who does a lot of emissions and sound testing work, and he can answer that question. But uh, so something did change or happen. I know that's why Yamaha WRs are red sticker bikes when they should be green sticker bikes and stuff like that. So um, I think they're the 2020 KTM dual sport bikes will be here in September, and I'm very excited to ride the. Uh, back again XCW four strokes because I think for a lot of guys um, those were really uh, good bikes um, going down a little farther George my fact checker um, is answering your questions uh, as much as he can I don't see uh, no San Felipe Bob huh yeah it's quiet 
Um, and uh, uh, Trevor Hunter, my partner paid for that bike. That's good. Um, <laughs> your dad paid for most of your bikes too. <laughs> if you, <laughs> oh, Trevor, I'm gonna beat the crap out of you here, aren't I? Better write down the apology right now. If you were faster, you wouldn't have to pay for them. <laughs> Ouch, right? Uh, it's times have changed. Uh, that's for sure. Um, I it was a lot easier to get free motorcycles. Um, when you were a fast desert racer when I was a kid. So uh, Brad Lou's up there. Um, okay. Uh, boy, that's a complicated question. Uh, Brad asked about 2017 to 2019. KTM didn't make the XCW in four strokes. Must have been slow sales. No, it was uh, emissions regulations. Um, I think they're back in 20. Fingers crossed the 2020 500 XCW doesn't have all the smog stuff. Um, yes, they will be EPA compliant. They have to be, um, Brad, they, that's just the way things work. But, um, the good thing is, is that it will be different than the EXC. Uh, I think that the sound requirement isn't as stringent. And so they're able to get a little bit more power out of the bike is what I'm told. And when I ride it, I will tell you, um, more than that. Uh, let's see, Trevor Hunter, but everything is ready with the story. I'm just being lazy. That you're being honest. That's good, Trevor. Um, <laughs> thanks. Thanks again. Uh, uh, Mike Smith, rather than adding a six gear to the XC, they should just ride the FE like uh, Skyler that smoked everyone. Ouch. <laughs> um, the FE is it? What's an, what's an FE? Oh, a Husaberg? Just who's that's the Husaberg guys, right? No, the F E. F E, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. It's probably a Husaberg. Um, let's see. Andrew Short rides for that company too. Uh, not Husaberg. Steve Conklin, did you see the Facebook post regarding the KTM seven sixty adventure low sided crash and result was a tank rupture and a barbecue? Um, I think he meant 790, uh, but no, I didn't see that because I haven't had time to pay attention to that, but I'm guaranteeing that that's going viral now. And if you own a KTM 790, you need to not crash the bike so it doesn't become a barbecue. And that's the problem with the internet is information spreads really quick, quick, but I bet you it, that was a hundred percent results of the crash. And if we design bikes to be crashed, we're not designing them to be ridden. So that's my take on it. And you can call me a, what did they call me? A shill? I'm a shill for companies like KTM. Uh, <laughs> you know, my uh, KTM 950, uh, the very first one ever brought into the country, by the way, if you want to buy it, it's uh, always for sale. Frame number zero, zero. Uh, uh, I've crashed that bike a couple times, but very slow tip overs and the tanks have never broken. And there's less protection on them than there is on the current KTM 790 but I ride it very uh, careful and try not to crash it. Brian England, um, he's replying to Steve. Does anyone know the truth there? Because the original story kept changing and then it got taken down today. Brian, that's, there we go. There's a smart answer to that. And somebody that's obviously paying attention to stuff like this. Um, that's the problem. The first guy that, that, that does something like that everybody grabs it and resends it like hey look at this and it's it's that's why what was the thing we were going to do uh oh um an oil shootout <laughs> or we we're going to talk about our favorite um whatever hey, you know i'm getting thirsty again you ready what was the question i had? what so you're you're going through a transition right now yes yes and not like most kids at your age these days in transitions you're going from a <laughs> Did you catch that? Sorry. I know. Is it, this, I it. We're not in Los Angeles, so I had to say it. Because for all of our friends in Los Angeles currently right now, or, or you know, Marin County, for those, those people, they, they are, <laughs> they are there's, they, they have, there's a lot of problems going, you know, kids going through transition. But Trevor, I mean, Trevor, Lo, Lo, Trevor's already gone through his transition. Um, Logan's going through the mini bike to big bike transition, which is difficult for you kids these days, by the way, mm -hmm. because when I went through my transition... I went from an 80 to a 125. And at that time, there was even 100s. You could go from an 80 to a 100. But you're going from an 85 
to a... 250. 250F. Big change, yeah? Yes. So what do you... what what what's the What's the biggest thing that you notice? The different stroke like four stroke to two stroke oh and that's that's huge too because we yeah. were we were all two strokes back then well i wasn't i, I was weird i i was one of those four stroke guys i had an xr 200 too so uh so two stroke to four stroke is big why is that uh because the it's a different gear ratio feeling gear like, ratio feeling not necessarily gearing but um The stroke combination. You practice it. Torque. 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 That feeling. It's it's actually so it's it has compression braking. Yes. You, you that that's kinda weird, right? When you uh-huh. back off the throttle it, it it feels like there's somebody's touching your rear brake. Yes, yeah, so that's that's one thing. And then and then the fact that the power band it starts quite a bit lower. You know, yes. it has more you can almost let the clutch out like at low RPM where on your eighty five for sure it wants to stall. Mm-hmm. And then it, and then the power lasts way longer between switching gears. Yeah. Yes. So that's a big change. Mm-hmm. What about the size of the bike? That's a huge change. Yeah. So I think he's still too too small for two fifty F, but he's just getting getting he's warmed up to. I just think he's, he's working on the one twenty five. Yeah, I'm just working on one. I got a YZ one twenty five. That's what I'm looking for. Oh yeah, mine's set up for me though. Uh-huh. Yeah, heavy springs. Yeah. Maybe have some cheater parts on it. Yes, Bob. The 85 has a higher power density than the 250, but the, but it doesn't have any torque. So power, de- yeah, okay, power density, um, power to weight ratio. Yes. yes. So you're not, you know, 250F versus 80. The uh, the 125 for sure. No, the the 85 has the, the highest power density of, of of any modern, not any modern bike, but most modern. Of bikes. of when you're just talking about the weight of the bike versus the power of the bike. The Versus the, versus the power of the bike, okay. But when you put it when you put an average eighty size rider on there, that that negates it, right? I mean, it, when you add the it the to, it reduces it, yeah. But the two hundred and fifty has this huge torque curve by comparison, it makes it much easier to ride. Yeah. And like I always say, how how much are you riding at peak RPM at wide open throttle, right? Mm-hmm. Not much, yeah. And usually, usually even when you think you're wide open, the engine's still building up to where it it peaks out, so. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to ride wide open on a bike, it should always be on somebody else's bike. Oh, no. Wide open's not hard on bikes. That's where they're designed to run. They're designed to run there. It's, everybody's afraid to go wide open. That's why I won't ride my KTM 350 more than 65 miles an hour down the road. Because <laughs> I'm afraid to run it wide open. Because it, it, it might just blow up, right? No, it's because it's, the sound is irritating to me. Um, so... You like the torque? Yes. You hate the weight? Yes. You can't touch the ground? Mm-hmm. That's not a big problem, though? Yeah, it is. I mean, how tall are you? Like 5'3". Five, 5'3", three. Five, three on, on a non-lowered YZ250. For <laughs> F. It's, oh, wait, he's, you stole Dad's bike. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So, uh... Every week um, that Logan comes on, he's going to tell us about his new uh, YZ250 uh, learning experience. Good thing it has electric start because I'd love to see you kickstart that thing. <laughs> then you wouldn't get to ride it much <laughs> or you wouldn't want to ride it much. That's how they kept me off the big bikes for a long time. You can't ride it until you start it. <laughs> so, uh, okay, then we're going to s- swing through the questions through here anymore. Um, Let's see. Uh, the internet is always right. Yeah, Steve. Uh, Chris Real is there in the thing. He might be able to uh, answer the question on the forum, but he's probably saving it for the thing. Uh, great show tonight. Uh, look forward to getting slapped around by Logan during the class this December. Dude, you're not mean to people, are you? I'm the only one that's allowed to be mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> right. Uh, what's a good starter bike for someone your age, Logan? What would you do differently when you started riding? Shift. Shift? <laughs> what, did you st- but did he start on a, like a, a KTM 50? A PW 50. A PW 50. You don't have to shift. No. And it, the it, problem started when he hit a 65. I remember seeing you guys out in the desert on the 65. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I saw, oh, he blew him up. 
<laughs> oh, well, so the, the trend continues. Yeah. <laughs> so how's your how's your how's your uh, how's your KTM 105? The Yamaha 105. Oh wait, is Yamaha? I thought you had a KTM. Yeah, yeah, Yamaha, yeah. Oh Yamaha, but you had a KTM. Yeah. What happened to that? <laughs> what what no, what noise did your dad just make? The uh, blown up noise. How, so you like to rev things? Not really. Oh. Not, not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. It down quite oh, so but but so that this thing this so it continued from sixty five up to the eighty fives. You just kept blowing stuff up. The last last motor wasn't his fault. Oh, it wasn't his fault. I don't think his so. Dad's yeah. rebuild. Nah, Not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. Maybe okay. Yeah. Um, that washer you were talking about earlier. Someone. The washer. Yeah. No worries. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah. hey, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you a secret. It's gonna save your dad a lot of money. Yeah, don't rev that four stroke because <laughs> you thought two strokes are hard to put back together. I haven't, I didn't notice that about you yet. I haven't. It's a, in the class. I don't see him. I don't see him revving stuff. Yeah. The sixty-five barrel was hard. Yeah. So um, why not put Logan on a one fifty R Honda? Uh, probably because they're real expensive to rebuild when he revs the crap out of them. <laughs> that was uh, Andrew McLaughlin asked that question. Let's see. Um, uh, Corey uh, Joseph asks, I think you'd be surprised by the instant throttle response with the new smart carb. When dialed in, I can't make it any bog when quickly cracking the throttle from idle. This is not actually how to tune low RPM. Uh, let's see, this not biased towards the carb. Hey, uh, Cody, I have not tested one on, on my own terms the way we usually test stuff, so I actually can't say that. I'm just talking about from my experience, and I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, when I rode a perfectly jetted carbureted bike, which was um, rare, uh, that carb setting worked at a very, you know, in a small range of altitude and a small range of temperature when I would call it perfect. And when it went a little bit, so we always had to jet for kind of a variation of, uh, of, of conditions and stuff. So, uh, and I'm not sure how they're doing the compensation with that, but I know they do have some sort of system for that, but um yeah, I hope I get to test one in the future too. Um, thank you. Thanks for commenting. Uh, thanks for everybody for commenting. I uh, I'm always stoked to see that we're getting uh, more and more viewers out here. Uh, remember, like, subscribe, uh, throw thumbs ups around. Tell your friends is probably the most important thing you can do. Um, one of these days, uh, we will have uh, lots of good sponsor discount codes and stuff like that. When I quit going riding and start focusing more on this business end, but uh, with that, we are going to start closing down Tech Talk Taco Tuesday because we've gone over the one hour limit. Gabe wasn't. Were you waving at us, shooting guns off in the corner because you are from Pahrump? Yeah, it's totally legal. Um, thanks for everybody for coming in and sitting in the studio. And now Logan will apologize on behalf of me to all the people that I uh, uh, said mean things about. So who, who do we do that to? The Brad Lou, Brian P., and Trevor. Uh-huh. And who's the other one? Scott Hoffman. Right. How many of those guys work for me? Uh, half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Compliments are hard to get around here. <laughs> so you can work your butt off. Oh, hey, by the way, go check out Scott Hoffman's video on the uh, on Dirt Bike Test, the YZ450F video, because you're going to see how to fly and a bike through the air sideways, courtesy, courtesy of uh, uh, Dustin Hoffman, no relation to Scott Hoffman. And, uh, and they have some interesting information about the bike where they call the chassis and the frame the same thing twice. And with that, uh, we will say bye from Pahrump. Uh, we're going to go riding when it cools off, which may not be in the very near future, but I'm going to go up to Colorado pretty soon and ride up there. Uh, so thanks again for Logan. Say bye, Logan. Bye. You going to come back? Probably. Okay. You're getting better at this. That Like way better. <laughs> and you're going to edit this tomorrow and get it up on YouTube. Yep. Okay. With that, we're going to see you in the future. Cheers.